Welcome to part 3 of the Social Link Symbolism. In this series, we take a look at each arcana in the Social Link and Confidant system of Persona 3, 4, and 5 to see how the character and stories connect with the symbolic meaning of the arcana. This video covers arcanas number 11 to 15. Once again, this video will contain spoilers for the main plot, Social Link, Confidant, and extra content of Persona 3, 4, and 5. If you don't want spoilers, then head out now. This is your only warning. With that out of the way, The strength shows a young maiden taming a lion. The lion is our inner beast, driven by the need to feed, and the maiden represents our ability to nurture and exhibit love. This imagery demonstrates inner strength, courage, compassion, persuasion, influence, taming emotions, overcoming self-doubt, hard work, focus. Reversed, this can mean self-doubt, low energy, raw emotion, vulnerability, lack of confidence, feeling inadequate, or low self-esteem. Yuko often finds herself unmotivated to do anything. Because she got involved with a scandal with a player two-timing on her and another girl, she finds it hard to care about anything. She doesn't care about her future or present. She tries to have grand ambitions to improve herself but becomes discouraged when she learns how much work it would involve. However, she is unable to resist herself when given the chance to coach some kids. She helps them train and involves herself in their activities. Working with the kids lets her realize what she wants to do with her life and she reapplies herself to becoming an athletic coach. While the rest of the football team shows hostility to the protagonist, Daisuke stands up for him. However, he is shown to be very uncomfortable around girls. His aversion to them would cause conflict with his friends. Daisuke had to realize that his fear of rejection and failure was causing him to have a lackadaisical attitude towards everything. After wishing his ex-girlfriend good luck with her new boyfriend, Daisuke is able to let go of his emotional baggage and become focused on training again. Ko comes from a traditional family where his love of basketball is shunned. He is very conscious and conflicted about being an adopted child. While he is free from the responsibilities of his family, he also feels replaced by his younger sister. This in turn causes him to feel despondent to everything. He is able to process his raw emotions by seeking out the truth of his birth and what his parents think of him. Ko felt like no one cares about him but later realizes that so many kind people are looking out for him. Caroline and Justine work on improving Joker's soul and personas by giving him different tasks. While initially seeming like cruel taskmasters, they show some joy at Joker's progress. However, when they discover the mysterious list of tasks, both start expressing doubts about the rehabilitation. They try to quiet these doubts by focusing on work. They are also conscious of whether they are pushing Joker too hard. Both Wardens find themselves slowly changing due to their interactions with Joker. When faced with the order to execute Joker, they go against this order and regain their lost memory. With Joker's help, they are able to reform into La Benza. The hanged man shows a man held upside down from his ankle. The calm expression on his face indicates that he is choosing to be there. What was supposed to be a punishment has become an act of self-sacrifice. This reversal represents pause, surrender, letting go, new perspectives, feeling trapped but able to release yourself, needing release or lack of direction. Reverse, it can mean delays, resistance, stalling, indecision, discontentment, apathy, detachment, or rash decisions. Maiko feels helpless due to her parents' divorce. They refuse to communicate with her and this leads to her believing that she might be responsible. Her decisions become more and more reckless, leading to her running away from home. While her stunt did not have the results she wanted, she did realize that her parents still care about her. Maiko faces difficult decisions, like which parents she should live with. But in making these decisions, she realizes many important things about her parents and about family. Naoki is unable to process his grief with his sister's death becoming such a circus. He is torn in different directions with everyone telling him how he should be feeling and acting. He feels smothered by everyone's grief, pity, and morbid curiosity as he is expected to play the victim all the time. He is burdened by questions that are not easy to answer and confused to what he needs to do next. He had been avoiding thinking about his sister until he finally goes to the place where they found Saki Konishi's body. There, he is finally able to release his repressed emotions. He decides that he will no longer run away from reality and decides to work at his family's liquor store. 
Her sister's death has not really sunk in with his family, and Naoki is determined to be there for them. Iwai does not want his adopted son to know about his background in the Yakuza. He does not want him to be stigmatized as the son of a criminal or to be exposed to crime early, which is what happened to him. Unfortunately, this means dealing with his former associates to keep their silence. He does not realize that in his efforts to protect Kaoru, he is becoming distant to his son. Iwai believed that he had a handle on the situation but did not realize how much the people and the culture of the Yakuza had changed while he was away. When it looked like things were hopeless, Iwai trusted his son with the truth. He is released from the ghost of his former life and his childhood as he comes to new realizations about his son and himself. Death is represented by a skull. If the human mind is said to house our thoughts and who we are, then the skull symbolizes an end to these thoughts or ending habits that have become fossilized. This visualization of change can mean endings, transitions, transformation, change, new beginnings, or spiritual transformation. Reversed, it can mean a resistance to change, inner purging, repeating negative pattern, dependency, or uncertainty of the changes needed to go forward. Pharos is the mysterious child that appears to the protagonist after the full moon missions. He turns out to be the shadow of the arcana of death, whom Aegis fought and sealed inside the protagonist. He wears prison stripes to represent that he is bound within the protagonist. He speaks of a coming end, but his attitude towards this end changes over time. While he agrees to be friends with you, or perhaps because he is friends with you, his demeanor towards you changes slightly every time you meet him. At the start, it seems like he can only appear during the midnight hour. Towards the end, as more and more pieces of him are returned, he is able to exist outside the midnight hour and finally exists separately from the protagonist. True to his word, his bond to the protagonist would persist as he becomes Ryoji and continues to be friends with the protagonist. Ryoji is convinced that nothing will stop the coming of Nyx and wants to spare his friends from the anxiety of knowing about the end. He offers to alter their memories but each member of the Seas finds their own reason to fight. Respecting their wishes, he leaves so that the Seas can remember him as Ryoji before he ushers Nyx into the world. Hisano's grief for her husband consumes her. She sees him everywhere, from the face of the protagonist to the small town where they made a life together. Her loving memories of him are soured by how her husband slowly became a stranger to her. She does not allow herself to be happy and came to believe that she was death herself. She believed that she has lost everything, but she is reminded of a life filled with love, evidenced by the letter she tried to burn. She finally lets go of death and becomes resolved to live as the woman her husband loved. Tay tries to act like her reputation doesn't matter but still cares about the patient she left behind. She tries to focus on this as she works on her own medicine, using the protagonist as a guinea pig. She tries to push people away, calling herself a quack and always referencing her tarnished reputation, but she slowly develops a reputation for herself and becomes beloved in her small community. She considers giving up when she finds out about the death of her old patient, Miwa. But when the truth is revealed, she becomes even more motivated to work on the cure. With her reputation restored and medicine finished, she becomes the new head of a new research division. Temperance shows water being poured from one cup into another. By keeping this motion steady, it shows us that any situation can be transformed into something different by tempering our thoughts and actions to bring about the desired change. By going with the flow, we are shown balance, moderation, patience, purpose, grace under fire, tranquility, harmonious relationships or soulmates. Reversed, it can mean imbalance, excess, realignment, lack of purpose, self-indulgence, discord, hastiness, and antagonism. Bibi is absolutely ecstatic to study and live in Japan. However, his indulgence for all things Japanese is cut short when his aunt, who paid for his trip, dies. His uncle wants him to return and Bibi decides to sew a kimono to show how much he loves Japanese culture. While his plan succeeds in impressing his uncle, Bibi finds out that many people pitched in to send him to Japan. He decides that he cannot leave his uncle while he's still grieving, but he is resolved to return one day to Japan, this time with his own money. Eri tries to be a mother to her stepson but is continuously rejected by him. She believes that she cannot form a bond with Yuta because they are not related by blood. This is one of many fatalistic beliefs she possesses, which are influenced by the things she watches on television. She believes that she is an intrusion on his life, and doesn't realize that Yuta feels the exact same way. 
she has allowed everyone else to dictate her opinion of her stepson that she neglected to make her own. Eri decides to spend more time with her stepson as they slowly learn how to be a family together. She was trying to be satisfied with her miserable life, but did not realize that she would not be happy unless the people important to her were happy too. Kawakami is trying to keep a smiling face despite the humiliation she gets from her second job as a maid. Her double life exhausts her and makes her sick and unable to do either job properly. She is patient with all the people giving her grief, whether it is the faculty, her boss, or the people extorting her. She is in her desperate position because she tried to help a problematic student, Takase. When word got out that she was tutoring him, she was told to stop, which she did. This caused Takase to become depressed, leading to his fatal accident. She slowly becomes disillusioned and wonders if she is worthy of being a teacher. She forgot why she wanted to teach and realized that she judged the protagonist unfairly because he was labeled just like Takase. When she is liberated from her past, she is able to dedicate more time into helping her students. The devil has two beings chained and enslaved. In some tarot decks, the lovers portray Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, while the devil portrays them banished from the Garden of Eden. The chains are behaviors, beliefs, and habits that shackle our spirits. They reinforce a life of banality that indulges in addiction, restriction, sexuality, materialism, playfulness, secrecy, obsession, bondage, and abuse. Reversed, it can mean releasing limiting beliefs, exploring dark thoughts, detachment, freedom, restoring control, reclaiming power, and independence. President Tanaka swindles you out of your money but takes pity on you for getting fooled so easily. He decides to teach the protagonist the secrets of his shady business practices. His drive to earn more money can be linked to growing up poor and being looked down upon by his peers. Initially, he had to threaten the protagonist to keep his silence. Eventually, he learns to trust him. He now finds that money takes up too much of his time. He decides to make a donation to a charity to help those who were as unfortunate as he was growing up. In doing so, he learns to focus on what makes him happy as opposed to just what makes him money. Sayoko flirts with the protagonist occasionally. Her sexual forwardness and beauty gives her a reputation and this gets her into trouble. Eventually, she comes to question why she stays at her chosen profession, especially when she feels that she gets left behind by her patients when they get better. When a former patient dies, she despairs, feeling that she left him behind. This causes her to fixate on work, granting her a different reputation. She was hoping focusing on work would give her purpose, but she forgot why she became a nurse in the first place. Instead of just reacting to the things around her, she decides to live her life by helping people and thinking for herself as she leaves the hospital. Oya is very cynical with regards to her job and the Phantom Thieves. She believes that no one is really truthful and that no one really cares about the truth. She tries to forget about her work with drinks and vacations. However, she used to be more passionate about her job. When her partner Kayo was turned into a scapegoat, the higher ups of the company tries to silence her by reassigning her to the entertainment pages and increasing her workload. When she is finally able to find Kayo, she finds that the conspiracy she uncovers goes deeper than what they initially thought, as she has become the victim of a mental shutdown. She steals herself for a long battle against corrupt politicians for the sake of her friend and goes forth to uncover the truth. Thanks for watching. The last one will take a bit longer to make since it will have some of the trickiest arcanas and social links to talk about. If you want to be informed when it comes out, consider subscribing. Feel free to share your thoughts and interpretations in the comments below. Until our paths cross again, see you seekers of the truth.